I'd like to first introduce our panelists. Uh, we have Elisa Bergman from Adobe. She is their chief privacy officer and brings more than two decades of privacy experience from the legal sector as well as the entertainment sector. We have Jay, who is President and Managing Director of Sapphire Ventures, brings experience from a long line of successful investments like MuleSoft, like Square, like Alteryx. He sits on the board of Data Robot and a dozen other uh, successful ventures. And Sanjay, Hi. who represents uh, Geospatial Media, which is a geospatial media and communications company based out of India, but he also advises a number of public policy organizations globally, including the U.S. National Geospatial Advisory Committee. He just returned from a trip to DC uh, with their latest meeting. Please welcome our panelists. Thank you. Thank you. So it's been about a decade now of us talking about data as the new oil. Every company has been rushing to monetize their data assets, to understand their data assets, and to learn the different ways that they can use them. But with issues coming up in the papers, like scandals and the misuse of personal data, um, or the advancing of a number of regulatory procedures around the world, including GDPR, but dozens of others and dozens of other company, countries, uh, we're seeing a shift. The top of our conversation today is to discuss discuss how that shift is going to play out in enterprise and startups over the next 10 years. I'd like to open it up by asking the panelists, what does it mean for data to be okay for a business to use and what distinguishes data that is and is not acceptable? I'll start with you, Alisa. Oh, okay, great. Um, it's interesting that um, you use the phrase data is the new oil. We at Adobe say trust is the new currency, and we really think it's important to think about putting the user at the center of the equation. For a long time, we've had a saying of say what you do, do what you say, don't surprise the user, and you ask about what data you can use or what data you should use, and these notions of privacy are very personal, very different um, culturally, generationally, um, so it's really important to put the user um, at the center of the equation. So I think what's right for certain business models and certain users all really depends on context and being transparent and really thinking about trust as that currency. Yeah, well, uh, we live in a data economy and somehow data politics is as well today. So it's a very, very important topic because it has a lot of economic and uh, political value. It attracts a lot of uses as well as sometimes abuse. So uh, I think that primarily we have three types of data which we, which we can categorize. Data A, which is being collected by the governments for delivering governance and citizen services. And the category two of the data which is being collected by uh, national security agencies, and this includes a lot of behavioral uh, and other informations as well. And third category of the information is that which we are collecting for the businesses and consumer services. And I think that, you know, uh, in view of the debates around data sovereignty and data uh, localization, which is a national issue, the data which has professional, uh, you know, attributes is available in the public domain and a lot of innovators can make use of that information. The problem comes up when you're talking of the personal attributes of the information and the businesses which are collecting that information with the consent to be used is fine, but the moment they extend that utilization by sharing and distributing to another companies, that's where is the real problem and I think the, it's an issue which should be attracted to the data policy and ethics both. Yeah, look, for us, it's always you're looking for opportunities to invest, right? And there are entrepreneurs on this, uh, in the audience here. So, you know, as soon as I think there is this whole debate about uh, what is, what do you own, what do you don't own, how do you, you know, trust and provide that, uh, you know, trust to your, to your consumers and to your customers, you know, there's a business opportunities here, right? So we kind of look at it as, yes, uh, there were some business models that have been built uh, based on kind of people sharing their data freely and not realizing what's, uh, what they are doing. But now the environment is kind of changing. And so we are actually looking at as, you know, as, as investors as potential opportunities on how you kind of solve these problems that have now cropped up with this you know, evolution of what people think is okay to share and use without notifying the actual owner of data. So each of the three of you mentioned a, a kind of common theme, if I, can, if I can point it out. You mentioned that trust is the new currency, so it's about 
making users aware of how you're going to use the data. Sanjay, you said something very similar about consent and making sure that people have given consent. And then Jay, you mentioned that it's important that people trust the system and that Absolutely. there are new business opportunities yep. built on trust. Yeah. Governments around the world are eager to make sure that that is protected, right? It's one thing to say that it's a business's responsibility to do those things. It's another thing to put in place regulations. All of those regulations, like GDPR, have that kind of component. Um, I'll go to you, Elisa, but do you think regulations like GDPR or like its Indian equivalent or Brazilian equivalent or any of the dozens of others that are being considered, one here in California, actually protect consumers? And what is it that people need to understand about those regulations? Yeah, it's a great question. It's a, a super complicated issue, but I think underlying a law like GDPR, or frankly, all the laws that are being considered um, around the globe and here in California, is um, the longstanding, what we call fair information practices. Um, and these are underlie all the privacy laws in the United States and all of the laws globally. And it's really common sense, like I said, saying what you do, doing what you say, being transparent, giving choices, some levels of controls, protecting the data. These have long been rich inside history um, when it comes to privacy. So I think we're seeing that happen globally. Um, I think it is good for consumers because it's getting all kinds of attention um, by conferences like this, senior management. Really excitingly, we're starting to see seismic shifts. Um, enterprises want to choose other uh, vendors who um, have high marks on privacy, and we're seeing competitive differentiators in that regard. Consumers want to deal with companies who they like their privacy promises on. There's a lot of um, big tech companies who are making big bets on um, privacy. And so it's really becoming a cocktail party issue of board level issue and just really something that everybody cares about. So I think the those laws and the continued focus on it is, is all good for the consumers. Do you think that there are any aspects of it that aren't good for consumers? Uh, of the laws? Uh, yes, of particularly? regulations such as GDPR. Yes, there are some unintended consequences of um, various laws and the, the devil's in the details, if you will, of the implementations. And I think um, privacy, it's really important to strike the right balance between protecting consumers and um, responsible use of information and really responsibly unlocking that power of data for real innovation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, the regulations uh, are at the initial stages in this field at the moment, and it's very, uh, you know, as I said, that's a very important topic. It's on the attention of uh, every national government, and GDPR is not necessarily the best to start with, but it is the most comprehensive act which has come up, and uh, it, it is just the beginning, and I think other nations are learning. I am a big critical and appreciative both of GDPR. In some extent, it has really brought a kind of trust uh, in the consumer's mind uh, across Europe that, hey, they there is the government which is trying to protect our interest. At the same time, it has, uh, you know, some of its provisions are over exaggerating, like third party liability and things like that. So I think we'll get there. It's a good initiative, and uh, other nations are trying to uh, follow some of those learnings. So, yes, uh, since it is such an important topic, I think the public policy and regulations will be in place, and I think with the time, we'll evolve and deliver better. Well, there's also the, the challenge is that, you know, it is going to cause some of the business models that we have kind of gotten used to, uh, yep. to not being able to be there anymore, right? A lot of people like to read in everything for free, you know, but then that means that people can't advertise to you. Like, you know, how, how do those media, you know, the outlets who survive on advertising survive, right? So there are certain things that I think people haven't thought through the business models and also how some of these regulations are, are actually implemented is not very clear. Like if you read some of those you know, regulations, it is very unclear, like what is it that you're supposed to do? You know, and, and, uh, and I'm sure that all of these things are going to get settled here, probably in the US in, in, in court, and then you know, in, in Europe, probably in EU or somewhere like that, it's just going to be dictated. But you know, by the time everybody figures out what is going to be, what is the right way to implement the GDPR, whatever California is trying to implement, it's technology will have moved on, yeah. right? There'll be like something else that will be going on. And just like we feel that the regulatory environmental tech, uh, uh, laws do not uh, kind of protect you, you know, by these the new laws get implemented, the technology will, we will have by then, I don't think will, you know, these laws will be applicable to them. So it's always like a catch up that you have to do. And, and I think eventually you kind of have to have companies who have the ethics to, to kind of say that, look, 
we are going to do the right thing with our, you know, our customers' data, right? So that is fundamentally that has to be done and created this ethics within, within enterprises. I'd like to pull on that thread a little bit. So it's the company's responsibility to use that data ethically. As an investor, you're evaluating different businesses. Um, what is it that you look for in their processes or in their practices or the way that they talk about data that helps you to distinguish that this company has gets it and this company doesn't? Or where are the red flags that you might look for? So look, I, I think, I think um, you know, when we invest in companies, we try to invest in, com in, in management teams that we think are going to do ethical you know, and do the things that are you know, honest and you know. Uh, so it is very hard to evaluate when we look at a company what they're going to do with their customer data, but you know, or how they're going to treat diversity, or you know, and people, you know, what is their environment of you know uh, work environment like, right? So for us, it's all about if the culture and the management team are all saying that, hey, we want to do the right thing. Sometimes we might take a wrong step, but you know, we'll fix it. So that is very critical for us to actually see that, hey, the the management teams are focused on building companies that are you know ethical and does the right thing for their for their customers. Right. Interesting. Um, from a governmental perspective, Sanjay, are there different um, ways, different nuances that governments are thinking about the use of data? One of the things that I think has been most interesting in the um, the nuances is the data localization aspect. So GDPR has a provision in which data can flow outside of Europe, but the regulation being considered in India, as I understand it, might limit that data to stay in country. How is that going to play out in the global stage as this war over data kind of evolves? Well, uh, I think, uh, you know, we have to accept this fact that data is a very powerful tool today. And, you know, the, the, in a kind of security situation or the war situation or any kind of, you know, business, data is playing a big role. We all experience that, how the cyber war is around. So the national governments are very, very, uh, you know, conscious of this fact. And then the data sovereignty, data safety, and data localization. Because it's an asset. Data is an asset. So you want to host your asset in your territorial uh, control. And that's where the national governments are, uh, you know, their viewpoint is this. But at the same time, I would like to say that, you know, that's a very valid point of view. But the same, uh, you look at the global, uh, you know, globalization of business. So for businesses, there has to be right of provisions uh, for, you know, making use of the data and uh, hosting the data and with some kind of protocols where those businesses can, uh, you know, take care of those requirements of the national governments. But that's where we are heading to. I think most of the governments which I talk to, they are very conscious of the fact that they want to have a control or territorial control on the data houses. Adobe being a huge multinational business, um, how are you looking at the flow of data across countries for doing the type of innovative work that you're trying to achieve? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. As, as I talked about before, too, um, there's different cultural attitudes towards privacy, different legal regimes that you need to be thinking about. And we're mindful of all of the laws globally and all of the different um, consumers who represent that data and really supportive of the free flow of data. And we really have a baseline set of principles that we apply to all of our data, like I spoke about the fair information practices. And we do think that the, the protections flow with the data. So um, we, we apply that base level of protection and um, are mindful of the, the various laws uh, that, that travel with the data. Does it change the way that you have to structure the company if, if data can't flow out? Let's just imagine a scenario where data can't flow out of India. The, the data collected in India must remain in India and all of the analysis and all of the work must be done in India. How does that change the business practice if that sort of thing comes up, would that be very disruptive for you? Is that an opportunity for new new businesses to spring up in those countries? Or how do you think that that would play out? Yeah, I think generally speaking, that would be fairly disruptive to businesses because the free flow of data is so very important and you'd have to have replications of servers and duplications of work and effort and those types of things. Um, and you've got data latency issues and law enforcement issues. So there's a, a long list of um, legal issues and technical issues you'd have to sort through to um, address some of those requirements. So um, we think the better approach is to apply for information practices, think about the free flow of data and really make sure that the protections flow with the data. 
Jay, do you see that there may be disruption in this industry or, or how are you investing in businesses that are tackling the, the clear and present question of uh, data flows, yeah. and data privacy, and all of these questions? Well, there's a bunch of startups that are doing, you know, focused on enabling people to provide GDPR, right? That's like a regulation that happened. Uh, you know, there are several companies that are trying to enable larger enterprises, uh, you know, to see that they're not violating GDPR, right? Yeah. Uh, by, by trying to look at where the data is flowing and, you know, where the data is stored and, and things like that. So there is, there is definitely opportunities. And then, you know, like we also think about as you build as entrepreneurs, build their, their new, new startups, the way they are going to build it and scale it from an infrastructure side or from an analytics side is going to be very different. Because as these regulations take hold, you know, people will realize, okay, these are the best practices. This is how I need to build a global company. And there's going to be tools and software that, that will be needed to provide that kind of support for these global companies, right? Yep. I think we're going to see, and, and I, I don't think anyone would disagree, that there's going to be an explosion even more than, we, than we've seen today oh, yes. of new data with the Internet of Things, with autonomous vehicles, with perhaps the enablement of 5G to, to spread that data more quickly. Um, do you see that, Sanjay, I'll, I'll go to you on this, do you see that as affecting who owns this data? So if I'm an autonomous car company and that data is flowing back to me about where this car is and who was driving it and how fast it was going, or do you see that also making its way into the public sphere for uses like traffic management or other public infrastructure? Uh, well, uh, you know, you have to uh, imagine that uh, the plethora of data which we are going to generate with autonomous vehicles is enormous. And uh, it's going to pose a new set of challenges because the cars, which is autonomous cars, will be collecting almost every activity what's happening inside the car or near the car. And that will be uh, in a quite private as well many times. And uh, so there is a debate going on around, uh, you know, how do you deal with that? But there is a larger issue that how does uh, several manufacturers share the data. You know, and then it's not only your car which will collect data about yourself, other cars will also collect data about you. And this is going to be a serious issue and I think the public policy uh, you know, officials are really being challenged uh, by how to create uh, public safety, liability, legality around uh, you know, this kind of business. And in my opinion, uh, you know, this debate about uh, data, privacy, ownership, is it's still at a very early stage, I would like to say. It's, it's still at a very early stage. And uh, we are moving uh, slowly and slowly, slowly towards maturity of the data business. So that maturity will actually take away a lot of nuances around automatically and got some kind of you know, rules of the game in place. And I believe that that's opening a huge amount of business opportunity, opportunity and businesses which are more responsible businesses. I think that coming days uh, it's not going to affect, you know, affect adversely, it's going to be affecting or rather creating more positive uh, atmosphere for the business. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, so we've talked a little bit today about it's the business's responsibility to build trust into their data yeah. pipeline and that regulations aren't necessarily going to keep up. We've talked a little bit about the value exchange between consumers and businesses and the way that that might need to change with, with different business models. Yeah. The freemium may lo no longer work if advertising isn't necessarily plausible. We've talked about the change that the geopolitical world might experience as data may or may not flow between countries. If we had to wrap it up in just a couple of words each, what would you say everyone needs to be thinking about and doing in their businesses to be prepared as this situation evolves? I'm just going to go straight down the line, starting with you, Elisa. Okay. Well, I'll end where I began, which is really we think that trust is the new currency and thinking about um, privacy as a, really a customer experience issue. Um, and that's really um, the way to go for um, everyone, I think. Yeah. And I think for businesses, right, not only for entrepreneurs, uh, that there are always business opportunities. Um, and there's always, you know, people who have already started businesses that they have to really think about how to solve these issues. But I think also on a personal level, you kind of also have to think that how much of your data is actually used by governments and things like that. Like if you go through UK, right, you get basically a picture of you take, gets taken every, you know, five seconds or some, some really crazy statistics, right? So, you know, your data is already out there. And what, what happens with that? 
Well, I would say that data is at the core of our living. So let's make it a conscious effort to share what we need to share and make use of the data and build our business models. Amazing. Thank you all for your time this afternoon. Excellent conversation. And uh, that's it. Cheers. Thank you Thank very much. You. Thanks a lot.